I'm doing this with a great deal of trepidation. This is not a reaction channel. Uh, I had a reaction channel once, and because of that, I know what happens when you react to someone who is very popular in a way that could even be perceived as the slightest bit critical. The white knights come out. So before I even start this, I just want to say this up front. I don't have a problem with Rick Beato. I really, really don't. The only reason that I even caught wind of what I'm going to talk about is because I have, in fact, been watching his videos for years. And yeah, I'm going to have to dunk on him just a little bit. But the only reason I'm doing this is because in the recent video, he drifted into my lane and said some things that I know for a fact are dead wrong. And I, and I feel like I have to say something about it. So for those of you who don't know, and not a big deal if you didn't, um, Rick, very well-known music producer, he's big presence on YouTube, 4 million subs, very large channel, very successful, very popular, has been known to occasionally go on these rants where he's, you know, let's, let's be honest, sounds like a bit of an old man. Usually that tends to result in people kind of giving him the old man yelling at clouds joke. And this was one of those. It's not a big deal, just another rant uh, about how music's not as good as it used to be, so on and so on. Uh, this time he decided to respond to the people who were criticizing him. Uh, and he said that he could prove, prove definitively, that people don't care, that the kids don't care about music, that people don't care about music like they used to. And this has been an argument he's made on that channel a few times. It's kind of a consistent thing for him. And he even said that he brought the receipts, which turned out to be historical records from Google Trends of Google searches for really broad terms. And it was very, very weak evidence. It was a bad argument, but whatever. It's, I'm not a reaction channel. I'm not a music guy. But then he got to this. If they don't care about that, then what do they care about? Must be video games. No, <laughs> video games are actually way down too. But they hit 100% of search volume in 2012. Why is that? Because Minecraft came out on November 18th, 2011. That's why. And it's pretty much declined from there. Beato then proceeds to attempt to give me an aneurysm by claiming several times that the kids don't play video games anymore because of TikTok. Now, you might know that I done a little bit of research in this area. I do research for State of Indie. I do research for many other articles I write and videos that I make. Uh, I was actually preparing to, or at least considering doing a video about how video game discovery has changed. It actually is shifting over to short form video away from like streaming where it used to be and how that's kind of changed and how that means that different types of games are going to be favored in this new media environment that would, without question, be a better use of the space on this channel than what I'm about to do, a more productive use at least. So let's take a look at the one piece of evidence he has for this, because I'm just going to repeat, no evidence anywhere, no studies, nothing suggesting that the kids are not playing video games. It's not there. It's not there. So here's his one piece of evidence is this Google Trends result you're looking at. It looks a little bit different than his. Uh, I don't know if he got it from like a mobile environment or something, but if you do get it on desktop and full screen and all of that, you get a little more granular data instead of it just being year by year. This is going, I think, month by month. Now, you do see kind of a general downward trend starting from about... Uh, 2011, 2012, which Beato says is because of Minecraft, which is pretty silly for a couple of reasons. First of all, uh, as you'll see in this, uh, the search terms for Minecraft peaked in 2013 after he said the kids stopped caring about it. And second, of course, just in general, that would assume that Minecraft was like a game you buy and play once, which it obviously isn't. It obviously isn't. This is, interest has been going over time for games like this. It is essentially live service. So the fact that people weren't searching for it after 2012 doesn't mean people weren't playing it after 2012. We all know that's not true. So what is this? What are we actually looking at here? Well, 
in this more detailed version, you may notice several peaks that, in fact, up until that kind of high water mark in about 2012, you saw a peak. They, they come in regular intervals. And some of you, the more clever of you, may have already guessed what those peaks are. But if you haven't, I'm going to give you a clue. They always come in November or December. These are confused parent peaks. These were back in the day, because this was, again, prior to uh, 2010. This is in the 2000s. This were uh, parents, grandparents, looking for things to buy for the kids and grandkids, not really knowing what the kids were into, so they just searched for video games. Now, that's important, because video games is a very broad search term. Now, I want you to zoom back to, you know, whenever you were at the height of your video game obsession. So I'm going to imagine I'm like 11 years old, which actually predates this. But back then, when you were kind of at the height of your interest and this was your life, this was all consuming for you, uh, you know, you, you owned all the consoles or at least you were begging your parents to get them and you were following, you know, whatever was appropriate for your age, magazines, websites, YouTube personalities, whatever you were following at the time, you were doing it all the time. This was your life. Think back to that era. How often... Did you go to Google and just search for video games? Never? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Because it's such a broad term, broad terms like this will get you only very broad information. Google is not, nor has it ever been, a significant source for video game discovery. It's just not. Not Google proper. YouTube is, obviously. But these are searches being done by people who don't know anything about video games and they're trying to figure it out the only way they know how they don't know anything they don't know developers they don't know publishers they may not even know platforms so all they can do is the broadest possible search to give them the broadest possible results now an interesting thing let's keep going with this chart because there's more here you may notice that after that once you get to about the uh, mid 2010s those confused parent spikes start getting smaller and smaller and once you're to the end of that decade, they're pretty much gone, which makes sense because at that point, the demographics of who the parents are have changed. And these parents are people who probably grew up playing video games. So they have that basic uh, bit of information. They don't need to do these broad searches. But you'll notice there is still one spike, and this spike does not match the rest. This is not a confused parent spike. It came in spring of 2020. That's that's the COVID spike. Of course it is. That came because people were inside. They needed something to do. And I've said before that the video game industry is currently in decline, but it's more like a regression to the mean because what happened is we had unusual growth during 2020 and 21, and that is, was kind of stealing growth away from 2023 and 24. So what happened was, in a nutshell, is people who do not usually play video games decided to start doing that. You saw things like a spike in interest in things like casual games on Steam during this period, and that's what that was. It wasn't that people didn't care about video games after that because they weren't searching for video games. They didn't need to. The people searching for video games during this period were people who didn't have a clue. So this is all they could do. They couldn't look for anything else. They didn't know what Steam was. They didn't know what any of the platforms were. So this is what they had to do. Now, I really feel like I could stop here, but let's keep going. I, I really want to take this one apart because, honestly, I, I, I was a little bit embarrassed for Beato at this point. So let me just go into a little more detail. So let's talk about the, the games that the kids these days like, the, the youth-oriented games. So here's a slide comparing Minecraft to two more uh, popular youth-oriented games. And you'll notice, you know, Minecraft goes down as Roblox and Fortnite go up. It wasn't the result of the kids not playing video games. They played different games because the old games got boring to them. Uh, here is a chart looking at Twitch. Uh, this is comparing uh, Minecraft to Fortnite. You can see that this big dip here where Minecraft streams, in terms of their viewership, fell to almost nothing around 2018, 2019. But more recently, Fortnite's kind of been on the outs. Uh, you might have heard of that. That's kind of becoming yesterday's news. So Minecraft is actually rising against it a little bit. 
Here's a chart looking at searches for Steam, uh, which I assume all my viewers know. If you don't, that would happen to be the main way, the, the largest way that people get PC games these days. And you'll notice, again, quite a few little peaks. If you go into the data yourself, you'll see these are usually in June and December. So that's the summer and winter sales, the big ones. Uh, you'll also notice that increased for a while, then decreased and increased. Does that mean that during the latter half of the 2010s, people stopped caring about Steam? No. People search for Steam when they need to find how to download Steam. Once you have it on your computer, you don't need to keep searching for it. So when you see interest go down, it doesn't mean people quit caring. It means they weren't growing during those periods. And in fact, you'll notice searches started going up when Steam and the PC market more generally started growing again. This signals growth, not interest. But now we have to come to the coup de grace. These are the search results for Counter-Strike, and I threw in Counter-Strike 2. You can barely see, barely see it's that tiny little red line at the bottom. And what do we see? A lot of interest in 2004, and then it plummets. Plummets. So obviously that means, according to Rick Beato's logic, according to his argument, that people don't care about Counter-Strike. Nobody's playing Counter-Strike. They're all on TikTok instead of playing Counter-Strike. Well, no. Again, for those of you not in the know, Counter-Strike, specifically CS2 right now, the entire series of games, is one of the most popular PC games in the world and has been for years. At any given time, it is, well, almost any given time, there have been some recent exceptions, it is almost always the biggest game on Steam, the most played game on Steam, by a wide margin, whatever game people are talking about, whatever's the big deal in the gaming press, what people are actually playing is Counter-Strike. So what does this mean that search engine results went down? Well, all that really means is that people were finding other ways to get information or they didn't need it. Because again, once you've got Counter-Strike downloaded, you don't need to keep searching for information about Counter-Strike, do you? Now, as I said, I am not a music guy, so I really should not be addressing Beato's points on music. Again, when it comes to the, the technical side and the industry stuff, I wouldn't challenge him, because obviously he knows things, many things, that I do not. But looking at his use of search result terms for music, as though that's a direct vector for interest in music, I have a couple thoughts about that. Uh, the first is the drop in specific searches for music and genres and things of that nature happened around 2006. Well, what, let's say, significant website launched around 2006, one that maybe we're all currently using? Now, obviously not every band immediately went to YouTube. Uh, many of them, it took them several years to come on, but... Uh, a lot of bands did immediately go to YouTube and start uploading their music videos. They recognized that this was a maybe a better place for music discovery than something like MTV or VH1. And if the bands weren't doing it, the fans were. There were lots of like bootleg rips of music videos you can still find, lots of lyric videos that are still online that are, you know, over 15 years old at this point. And the thing about YouTube is these days... If you follow a band on YouTube, you really don't need anything else for their information, to get information about them. I have a couple channels that I use, one of which is exclusively for music discovery. It is, in fact, this one. It's the Find the Fabulous channel when I'm just watching videos. The only things I watch on here are music videos, album streams, and live concert footage. And that's it. I ignore everything else. And if you do that, if you just uh, watch all of these videos from especially the same bands, then every time something new comes out from that band, every time there's a new piece of information, a new video, a new album announcement, a new tour announcement, you get that information right away. So for these bands I've discovered through my YouTube music channel, I don't need to look up any more information about them. It's all coming directly to me. And that's become a thing that a lot of people are, especially younger people, are finding alternate means of finding information besides using Google. Because search engines are more useful when the internet is more fractured, when it's more decentralized. 
when it's highly centralized like it is right now, you can just go to those giant sites and just search on them. You can just search on YouTube. You can search on Instagram. You can search on TikTok, and that can get you the same results. And my second hypothesis is, why the hell would anyone just search for the term music? Like, why would you? If you like music, why would you search for the term music? You know what happens if you search for the term music? You get the Wikipedia definition of music. You get different de dictionary definitions of music. Why would you do that? Broad terms like that do not return useful information most of the time. People are doing more specific searches because as we've gotten more used to search engines, we've gotten better at using them. People tend to make narrower and narrower searches. Those of you uh, lost souls who are familiar with the black art of SEO know that this is what is called a long tail. If you're trying to capture search results, you don't go for something like music or hip hop or country music. You don't even really go for bands or albums. You go for things a hell of a lot more specific than that. Because what's happened over time is those larger search results have been fractured more and more and more. Interesting a bit of trivia on that, by the way. Uh, women are more likely to do this. There is a gender divide. Uh, women are more likely to refine their search results when they don't get something right away. Men tend to just kind of brute force Google. So that's all I have. I'm obviously aware this was in many ways off topic. I may not post this, uh, but if I do, again, I, I sense you guys getting the, the shields out and mounting up your steeds. Let me say I don't have a problem with Rick Beato. I really don't. But he said something, many things, many things, given how short the video was, seven minutes, he said many silly things, including many silly things that were way outside of his lane and directly in mine, and I, sorry, I'm sorry I had to note that.